Directed by Robert Rodriguez, Spy Kids, Armageddon starring Gina Rodriguez, Zachary Levi, Everly Kaganila and Connor Esterson in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix. As the adventure film releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview, talk about the ending and discuss some details of the film so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the movie but if you are done watching it already, let's dive straight into the video. And yeah, while you are at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to the basic plot. The film starts with a flash forward as we see two kids, Tony and Patty, on a rescue mission but the details of the mission will be revealed much later. Meanwhile, in a flashback, we see Tony and Patty's parents, Terence Tango and Nora Torres, who had some strict rules in place because their kids were quite good at playing online games and did so the majority of the time. The maximum amount of time Tony and Patty could spend playing games was a few hours at a specific time during the day. Tony nonetheless continued to sneak out at odd hours of the night to play games with his sister. Patty was the kind of person who thought that being truthful in one's life was of the utmost importance, so she didn't like it when they broke the rules. Tony didn't conquer because he always believed that one should get their way by any means necessary. He may have gained something from telling lies, but Patty tried to convince him that he would ultimately pay a price for it. Tony participated in a contest run by a gaming company that produced the game High School. He received High School, a brand new game at the time, installed on his computer as a reward for winning the contest. Tony was happy because he had achieved his goals even though he had won the competition by cheating. Both children then sneaked out at night and made the decision to see how the game was going. Tony's father used to alter the password to prevent his kids from accessing any games after the allotted time. The password, however, had been discovered by Tony who then used it to access the game. But as soon as the game began, the screen began to flicker and the computer crashed. The children, who couldn't comprehend what was going on, hurried to get to their bedrooms before their parents could catch them in the act. Ray the King Kingston, the game's creator, had tricked Tony into allowing him to break into the system and steal the Armageddon code for him. Ray understood that if he could obtain the code used by OSS agents to enter any device, he would be able to rule the entire world and command people to do as he wished. Terence and Nora were debating whether or not to delete the Armageddon code because they knew what would happen if it ended up in the wrong hands. Terence disagreed with it but Nora knocked him out and then went to delete it. Ray, however, successfully penetrated the system and took the Armageddon code before she could delete it. The game High Score was soon installed on the devices of half of the world and there was quick global chaos. Terence regained consciousness but High Score, the game's antagonist, launched an all-out assault on their home. Terence and Nora were able to send the children to a safe house but they were unable to escape and were captured by Ray King Kingston. Ray was only able to hack into half of the devices in the world because Terence had divided the Armageddon code into two halves. He sent his men to kidnap the kids and bring them to his hiding place after realizing that the second half of the code was in the locket that Patty was wearing. According to Terence, Tony the young boy wasn't even aware when he solved the Armageddon code. In the course of the fireball mission which resulted in Vargo's death and the destruction of his facility, Terence claimed to have obtained the blueprint for a weapon Vargo was developing. He was aware that if he could decipher that blueprint, he could use it to create a code that would enable them to access any type of device all around the world. However, Terence was never able to fully comprehend the code but one fine day Tony entered his room and believing it to be a puzzle, he solved it. Ray Kingston, who was Vargo's son, thought that his father was using his inventions to improve the world when the OSS team showed up and brutally murdered him. Even Paddy was of the opinion that Terence and Nora could have avoided having to kill everyone. The children were taken into a safe house where they received a crash course on how to become a spy but the OSS members took them to the HQ. Ray's gaming goons infiltrated the facility and managed to get Patty's locket. The kids then decided to follow them and enters Ray's den and the first scene from the movie resumed only after that. After fighting the creatures, the kids found their parents. After learning about their parents' previous mission, Patty explained to them what they could have done to defuse the situation without hurting anyone, which surprised Terence and Nora because it made sense and had never occurred to them. Ray had come to the conclusion that the world's inhabitants didn't deserve to be treated nicely after the passing of his father. By breaking into their devices and commanding them to perform his tasks, he hoped to effect a change. The realization that Terence and Nora's greatest achievement was actually their biggest failure came from their own daughter. Terence, Nora and even Tony realized that what Patty was saying made complete sense and that despite being spies, they didn't always have to act dishonestly. Ray, however, was one step ahead of them and before they could do anything, he activated the Armageddon code chip 
and started the process of hacking into every person's device on the planet Earth. Tony noticed a countdown and realized he needed to act quickly before it was too late. He discovered the location of the main system and made every effort to halt the countdown. But as he had unknowingly armed the system, he realized that the king had tricked him. The king then showed up and informed them that they had been deceived and that he would now bring destruction to the world. When Ray Kingston vanished from the scene, Paddy came to the conclusion that if they could enter the game and stop Ray, they could save the world. All they needed to do was figure out how to stop Ray because they were aware that he was running the show from inside the game. The four of them entered the virtual world of high school as Terrence and Nora sat in the VR pods facing their children. The family faced every dangerous antagonist present in the game verse including Heck Knight and the King. Patty had asked everyone to play fairly even if some people used unfair tactics. In the final scene of the film, it appeared as though Tony would lose to the king, but thanks to his honesty, he was given an additional life, a rare instance in which a player receives a fair play reward. Ray was defeated by Tony and Patty asked the OSS to send him back into the virtual world so he could mature into a better man rather than arrest him. Ray was touched by the children's kindness and candor and he came to the conclusion that he didn't need to use such genius means and techniques to bring about change in the world. Later, the children were summoned by Devlin to the OSS office the following day where he informed them that they were also being formally recruited as spies. Devlin pledged to change the spy manual and stop instructing his agents to use unethical tactics. The spy family had a successful outcome and it's likely that they will accept more missions and prevent crises around the world in the upcoming volume. The film is a reboot of the popular franchise but it does not have the thrill of the first movie. The messaging is completely in your face, the first film managed to make us its fan despite having questionable CGI. The film worked for its inventiveness and not giving a damn about Samuel aesthetics. The story in the first film was as generic as it gets but as kids it gave us a sense of relatability which we won't be able to say for this film. Only the target audience can decide whether the film works for them or not but one thing I'm pretty sure about is that kids these days will probably relate to Junior and Carmen more rather than Patty and Tony. But the kids on the other hand gave some nice performances and even their comic timings at this age might come out as a surprise to all. But the inventiveness of the OG trilogy is somewhere missing. The video game plot has been rehashed so much that it makes no sense to include that in the film. Unlike Alexander Minion, the villain in this film is not compelling enough and the dialogues are completely in your face. So all in all, we are not really capable of judging the film but if you ask me as an adult who loves kid films, I was mostly disappointed. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Spy Kids Armageddon on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinnamon series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off. Adios, it's more fun that way and I'll be back.